Resourceful Designer, episode 275, Critiques, Putting the Constructive in Criticism. Welcome to the Resourceful Designer podcast, offering solutions to streamline your graphic and web design business so you can get back to designing. And now, your host, he appreciates a well-timed dad joke, Mark Decote. Yep, there's not much funnier than a well-timed dad joke. Speaking of dad jokes, did you know that out of all the inventions of the last 100 years, the dry erase board has to be the most remarkable? I'll give you a second to appreciate that one. Okay, moving along. In this week's podcast episode, I'm talking about critiques, something you would think designers are familiar with. But from what I've seen on social media, that's not always the case. So I'm going to talk about when and how to ask for critiques, as well as how to give them in a constructive way. But before I get to that, I'd like to ask you a favor. As you know, Resourceful Designer is a podcast aimed at helping designers of all sorts run a successful design business, whether it's as a part-time freelancer or a full-time design business owner. Well, over the past couple of years, many previously employed designers either forcibly or voluntarily left their jobs and started working for themselves. If you know of any such designer, would you please share this podcast with them? Maybe mention how Resourceful Designer has helped you and your design business, and how you know it can do the same for them. If they're not familiar with listening to podcasts, you can show them how to find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere else that they normally would listen to music. You can even tell them about the convenient app available for both iOS and Android that contains every single episode. So if you can, please help a fellow designer out by sharing Resourceful Designer with them. Now, just a quick note here, the Resourceful Designer community enrollment in the community has closed until February of 2021. Now, if you would like to be reminded when the community reopens and I'll allow new members in, visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash community and sign up to be notified. And if you happen to be listening to this in the future and it's after February of 2021 and you're interested in joining the community, you could visit that same link to either join or just learn more about it. That's resourcefuldesigner.com slash community. And now, critiques, putting the constructive in criticism. Back in college, one of my professors made us do critiques at the end of every project. Once we completed a design project, whether it was a logo project or a poster, or it didn't matter what it was, he would place everyone's design at the front of the class, and then one by one he would select students and ask them to critique one of the projects. The reason he did this was twofold. He wanted us to develop an eye towards examining other designs in order to both learn from them, which makes us better designers, as well as seek aspects of the design that we might have done differently. The other reason he held these critiques was to thicken our skin. Well, so to speak. I mean, as designers, we have to learn to take criticism on the works we create. If you're easily offended or don't take well to your creations being evaluated in this way, then maybe being a designer is not for you. Besides, what better way to learn than by hearing our fellow students dissect our works? And I can tell you that I learned a lot from hearing my classmates tear apart the things that I created. But this exercise that we conducted at the end of each project had another effect. You see, the professor wasn't only evaluating our design work, he was evaluating our critiques as well. He would point out when our comments were not helpful or ask us to expand on our comments in order to better convey what we were trying to say. And even though every student dreaded these critique sessions, looking back, I'm really grateful that he made us do that. It made me look at designs through a different lens, if you will. It taught me the difference between giving a critique and offering constructive criticism. And that's what I want to discuss today. As you may be aware, there is a Resourceful Designer Facebook group. You can join by visiting resourcefuldesigner.com group. In this group, or any other design group for that matter, and that includes the Resourceful Designer community, designers often post their designs, quote-unquote, for review. Sometimes they're looking for advice. 
Sometimes it's for validation. And sometimes it's nothing more than an ego grab. Regardless of their reasoning for posting their work, I can't help but shake my head at some of the comments they receive. Comments which supposedly come from experienced designers. And yet, they're of no value to the person posting their design. So I want to talk to you about my method of critiquing. Now, is my method the one true way of offering critiques? Of course not. I'm not saying that the way you're doing it is wrong and you should be doing my way. But what I am hoping is that after hearing what I have to say, you may take an extra moment to contemplate your response the next time someone asks you to critique their work. So let's start off with when you should be asking for critiques. In my opinion, there are four stages of a design project when you should ask for critiques. During the initial concept stage, whenever you hit a roadblock, before presenting to your design client, and finally before sending the design to print or just launching it wherever it's going. So let's break those down. Ask for critiques during the initial concept stage. At the beginning of any design project is when the work is most fluid. It's the point when the design could possibly take off in any direction. If you're working on a logo project, you may sketch out dozens, if not hundreds of concepts before narrowing it down to the one you want to develop further. Now during this stage, it's not uncommon to show your favorite concepts to someone in order to get another person's opinion. You're not actually asking for critiques on the actual design but more of the overall direction you're taking. Now, this is a great way to validate that you're actually starting on the right path before you get too far down the road, because another set of eyes can help you spot stronger designs and weed out the weaker ones. And this can be very helpful for someone who's been staring at all these dozens or hundreds of designs for a long time, which diminishes your objectivity. So asking for critiques during the initial concept stage can quickly help you determine what direction the rest of the design project will take. Number two was ask for critiques when you hit a roadblock. We've all been there. You're designing away on something you initially thought was great, but all of a sudden you're doubting yourself. There's just, I don't know, there's something about the design that just isn't sitting right, but you just can't figure out what. Well, this is the perfect opportunity to get another set of eyes on it. Sometimes, another uninvested designer can look at a design and spot the flaws that you've become blind to. So anytime you hit a roadblock or start to doubt something that you're working on, ask someone else to critique it. And number three is ask for critiques before showing your work to the client. You've completed your designs, you've polished it up, and you're ready to present it to the client and you're proud of what you've created. But before doing so, now is the perfect time to show it to somebody else first, just in case there's something that you're not seeing. It's not a good feeling to tell a client after you've presented something to them that you need to make a small change that you only notice after. That kind of tarnishes the mantle of quote-unquote expert that they've placed over you. And it's even worse if it's the client that points out the flaws. So in order to prevent this from happening, it's always a good idea to ask for critiques before presenting your work to the clients. I can never understand in the Facebook groups when somebody will post a design and says, here's the design I created and gave to the client. What do you guys think? At this point, what does it matter what we think if you've already given it to the client? Anyway. And number four, ask for critiques before sending a design to print or launching it if it's digital. There is potentially a lot of money involved in a print run. You do not want to find out after the fact that there was an issue with your design. If you're a solo designer and you don't have anybody to bounce it off or people helping you, I highly suggest you find someone or a group of people, like in the resourceful designer community, that can review your work before you hand it off to the printer. You will be forever grateful if they spot something that you had missed. Now, digital work isn't as critical since it can always be corrected after the fact, but it still reflects badly on you if something was published with errors or flaws. So to prevent this from happening, ask for critiques before sending the project out. Now, to me, these are the four times when you should be asking for critiques. Now, that doesn't mean that you should limit it to these times. At any point during a design project, you can ask someone to look it over. 
But even if you're confident in what you're doing, these four critique points should not be ignored. Now let's talk about how to ask for critiques. Posting a design somewhere and just saying, what do you think, is not how you should ask for critiques. Without any context, you're just opening yourself up to a bevy of unhelpful answers. What do you think? I don't know. I think it could be better. What do you think? I think you should use blue instead of green. What do you think? Eh, I'm not crazy about the font you used. What do you think? I don't like it. None of those are useful answers. What you want to do is make it easy for people to critique your work. After all, you are asking them to devote a bit of their precious time to help you. The least you can do is make it easier for them to offer that assistance by giving you advice that you can use. A small bit of effort on your part will benefit both you as well as the person critiquing your work. Now, the proper way to ask for critiques involves three key elements. A short brief of the project, the parameters you are faced with in the design, and what you're looking for in the critique. So let's look at each of those. Number one, a short brief of the project. If you're asking me to critique a logo, it would be nice if I knew, at minimum, what industry the client is in. You're showing me a logo of Bluebird. Well, is that the name of a restaurant? Is it a bus line? Is it a band? A children's clothing line? Without this context, how am I supposed to give you a proper critique of your design? You don't have to provide an in-depth project brief. A short description of who the client is, where they're located, what services and products that they're offering, and who their target market is will help me greatly when offering my opinion on your design. Two, the parameters that you faced in the design. What I mean by this is, was there anything that limited what you could do with the design? Did the client insist that you use a certain sans serif font? Were you limited to a certain palette of corporate colors? Was there a certain element that needed to be incorporated into the design? Knowing these things will help me in my critique. If I know you were limited to a sans serif font, I won't recommend a serif font or a script font. I won't comment on the colors if I know that you had no choice but to use the colors that you used. And if I know that the client wanted a nautical theme, I won't recommend you put a train or something else in the building that's not nautical. Knowing what parameters you faced will help me give you a better critique. And number three, what are you looking for in a critique? If you want an overall opinion of the design, just say so. But if you want to know about certain aspects of it, let me know. If all you're interested in is whether or not the size of the icon is appropriate to the size of the logo type, then say that's what you're looking for. There's no sense me dissecting the rest of the design if all you want to know is a sizing issue. If you're designing a poster and want to know if the visual hierarchy is working, ask people to list in order what they think are the most important areas of the poster. That'll give you your answer. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting a critique of an overall design, but if all you need is someone to verify one aspect of the project, then save both us and you some time by saying up front what it is you need. So those are the three things that are needed when you ask for critiques. And now let's get to the good part, giving critiques. Critiques are a learning experience for both you and the person you are critiquing. It helps hone your design skills by spotting ways you think a design can be improved. It also shows you things you may not have considered before. And it helps the person that's getting the critique by showing them a different approach to their design. Design is subjective. No two designers think the same way. Just because it's not the way you would design it doesn't necessarily mean it's the wrong way or it doesn't work. Just that you would have done it differently. Because of that, there are no designs in this entire world of ours that we can't critique. As the title of this episode states, a good critique should offer constructive criticism. Meaning, the suggestions that you make, and keep in mind that a critique is just that, it's a suggestion, but the suggestions you make should have a reason behind them. 
Here are four key ingredients to making a good critique. Number one is identify what you believe can use improvement. Number two is explain why you believe the current way is lacking. Number three is offer suggestions on how you would do it differently. And number four, state why you believe that if they follow your suggestions and make those changes, it'll improve the design. And that's it. If you can offer these four things when giving a critique, you are providing helpful advice to the person that's asking. Let's look at each one of these. Number one, identify what you believe can use improvements. It's really hard to offer good critiques on an overall design. Most likely, whatever you have to say pertains to a particular part of a design. Therefore, the first thing you should do is identify what part of the design you're actually referring to. This is as simple as saying that you think the website header or the logo icon or the newspaper masthead need some improvement. Pinpointing areas of the design will allow you to break up your critiques into actionable sections. This is what I think of the icon. This is what I think of the logo type. This is what I think of the sizing and spacing. This is what I think of the colors. Whenever possible, critique individual elements. It's much more helpful than trying to critique the overall design. Number two, explain why you believe the current way is lacking. It's a lot easier to convince someone to change something if you can explain what you believe is wrong with the way it is now. For example, explaining how the connecting letters in a script font are hard to make out and there's the possibility they may be interpreted in the wrong way. Well, if you explain that, it'll go a long way in helping you convince the person that maybe they should change to a different script font that is easier to read. Or pointing out that the color of the font on the background color that they chose, that they're too similar in you and may cause legibility issues for certain visually impaired people. This sort of statement helps strengthen your argument towards changing the colors in the design. So whenever possible, explain why you believe the current way is lacking before you offer a suggestion on how to change it. And that does not mean just saying, oh, it looks bad. You have to give a reason of why you believe it looks bad. Number three is offer suggestions on how you would do it differently. Remember how I said that no two designers are the same? That means that what you think is the right way may not be what the next designer thinks is the right way. Sure, there are some things that most of us agree on, but even the tried and true design principles that we've been taught have been successfully challenged by innovative designers. That's how design evolves. Do you know the saying, blue and green should never be seen except for inside a washing machine? There was a time when no designers would use blue and green together. And yet nowadays, it's a common color combination. So just because you think something doesn't look right doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. I'm not a fan of street art grunge style of design, but that doesn't mean it's not a viable design choice. It's not wrong. It's just something I would not choose to do. Now, keeping that in mind, form your opinions as suggestions when critiquing someone's work. Let them know how you would do it differently, and then let them decide if it's something they want to pursue. And don't be offended if they choose not to listen to your idea. After all, no two designers. Number four is state why you believe making your suggested changes will improve the design. The best way to win an argument is by offering your opinion and explaining why it's so. Or at least that's the theory behind it. I don't know if my wife would agree or not. Anyway, no designer should change their design without a good reason. And I think it would look better in red is not a good reason. Now, explaining that red is a more passionate color, which encourages people to make spur of the moment decisions, might be a convincing argument and why they should change the color to red. But you don't have to get philosophical with your answers. Sometimes the why behind your suggestion is simple. Increasing the space between the text and the underline will make it easier to read when it's reduced in size. A simple why that explains your reasoning behind increasing the space. So whenever possible, state why you believe your suggested change will improve the design. And that's all there is to it. 
Those four points identify what you believe can be improved, explain why you believe the current way is lacking, offer suggestions on how you would do it differently, and state why you believe making those suggestions will improve the design. That's all it takes to make a good critique. Now, critiques are hard, both receiving them and giving them. But critiques are also how we improve. If nobody ever critiqued your work, you would never get better at what you do. And if you never take the time to critique another designer, you'll never learn new things. And remember, you can critique designs even if you are not asked to. Now, you don't go up to a designer who hasn't asked for a critique and start explaining how you would change their work. You don't even have to tell the designer you're doing it. In fact, I bet you do this all the time already. I know I critique every billboard, website, bumper sticker, t-shirt, etc. Anything that I see. I'm always thinking of, how would I have done that differently? Either that, or I'm looking at something going, wow, I'm mentally filing that away as a good design idea that I can steal for a future project. I can't help it. I'm a designer. And you probably do the exact same thing. Critiques. They're the bane of our existence but they're also the fuel that propels us. We wouldn't be designers without critiques. But always remember, the critiques are just suggestions. As I mentioned several times already, no two designers think the same way. So just because someone says something should be changed doesn't necessarily mean that you should change it. You need to weigh what you know about the project, what you know about yourself as a designer, what you know about the client, and what you know about the persons whose recommendations you're considering following. The best and most useful critiques come from people you know and trust. If a stranger says something should be green, but your trusted design colleague says it should be blue, chances are you're going to lean towards making it blue. And that's why being a a part of a group or just having colleagues or friends that you can bounce these ideas off is invaluable. Places like the Facebook group, or even better, the resourceful designer community, can be such a benefit for this sort of thing. So whenever possible, turn to the people you know before you start taking suggestions from some strangers in a Facebook group, unless you've already got to know them and can trust their opinions. Because believe me, there are some opinions out there that hold no merit at all. Now, I would love to know what you thought of this episode. In fact, send me your critique of this episode at feedback at resourcefuldesigner.com. So thank you very much for tuning in. I just want to remind you one more time that if you know a fellow designer, somebody who's freelancing or starting their own design business, or even thinking of starting their own design business, why don't you mention Resourceful Designer to them? I'm sure they would be grateful for it. And for all the ways you can subscribe, visit resourcefuldesigner.com slash subscribe. So thank you very much. Until next time, I am Mark DeCote wishing you all the best with your design business and reminding you to stay creative. Thanks for listening to the Resourceful Designer Podcast at resourcefuldesigner.com.